Hey, I'm here. Um, I am sitting at my dining table today where I do my artwork and you might hear some SBS chill chats uh, in the background or some music in the background and this is how I do it. It is Sunday morning here at 11 a.m. and I've been going at it pretty intensely this morning. Uh, working in pencil and illustrating my kid's book, The Tale of the Sad Mermaid, which I might share a little bit about today in this shorter video podcast. But the message of today that came through really strongly with me, uh, through me or for me or for whoever is listening, by the way, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for holding space for me and um, for just trusting me to to share uh, your time with me and also me opening up my heart, I guess. You know, I'm just, that's what I'm trying to do. If there's anything we can do for each other, it's just try and be as real as possible and to open up our hearts for each other and be willing to see ourselves as we really are and then see others as they really are too. Whether that's dysfunctional, whether that is amazing and incredible, whatever, it, you know, it's just about, you know, that a saying kind of comes to me a lot, which is I hear it all the time and you probably hear it a lot these days since, um, you know, since the pandemic and it's, it is what it is, you know, it is what it is. Things are what they are and um, whatever your hand is that you've been dealt in your life it is about how we play the hand that we are dealt in life and the unfairness of it and the crying of it won't change what you what you have what you are so the message that's coming through really strongly this morning to share with everyone or with anyone out there is just keep going. Just keep going. Even if no one around you understands you, even if your own mother doesn't see you, even if your own family doesn't see you, doesn't care about you, doesn't understand you, doesn't want you, even if you have nothing to eat today in, you know, even if you have nowhere to sleep, no shelter, nothing like it, whatever it is that you, wherever you are and from whatever angle and perspective you are seeing the world from, just keep going. Don't stop. That is the real secret. I think if you are an artist and I know and a lot of artists listen to me. Um, a lot of kind of black sheeps of the family listen to me. I know you do. You write into me and I, I get your messages and I read all of them. I see all of them. And I see beauty and I see darkness and I see all of the shades in between and I let you come to me as you are. I understand. There is no judgment. If you're willing to be vulnerable with me, I am more than happy to be vulnerable with you. And that's what this is all about. It's about being vulnerable. When we don't be, when we're not vulnerable, nothing can happen. The strength of your relationships is entirely dependent on the strength of how far the other person's willing to let you see how vulnerable they are. That's the real strength here. Although we're not ever taught that in society, that is the truth. Um, a lot of people grow up in households where no one even says good morning to to each other. A lot of people grow up in places where it's kind of just expected that they will follow the path that was set for them and they don't get a say. 
and it's so complex and there's so many different moving parts to it all. But I was listening to a podcast. By the way, I'm a creative and I talked to my friend the other day, if you're listening, hey, (laughs) Um, we were talking about this. Creatives need to be with other creatives. You must find people that can see you. There's no use someone... There is no use in trying to connect with someone that isn't willing to be vulnerable. There is no use in trying to connect with someone who doesn't see value in you. You're knocking on a castle door of something in someone that will never open. And there is only so much um, knocking and waiting at the door that you can do before you know that you're just going to have to try and have the courage to uh, take the gamble and, and the chance and just kind of go, it's not going to happen with this person and I need to let go and I need to try and find another castle door that will open for me. Because it's the curiosity of potential that drives us to want tomorrow to be better than it is today. That's why we do what we do. That's why you go to work. It's why we want, we want the future to be better than what it is. But what if I told you it's not going to be? What if I told you that this is as good as it gets right now? All you have is the moment right now. And if you're listening and you're waiting for the right time to ask that person out on a date, or if you're waiting for the right time to break up with that person or leave that job, or if you're waiting for the right time for inspiration to strike, it's never gonna come, never. It doesn't work like that. You have to start from where you are right now with what you have right now, that's it. There is no waiting because life is just moving. It's a beast. It's like waves on the ocean, you know, hitting the beach. One wave just goes after the next and the next moment goes on to the next. And I'm getting my head around this kind of concept of there is no end. There is no end, okay? There's just shifting and dissolving into different moments and then the next moment happens and that is life. So there is just the moment right now. And a lot of books talk about this. A lot of monks talk about this. Uh, A lot of shamans know this. If you're in the mystical world, you should already know that there, you know, the power of now, there is nothing more greater than right now. And it's the stories and the feedback loops that we kind of create on our head, in our head that sustain, um, the dysfunction that we can shift if we're willing to acknowledge it, see it, own it, and then do something to shift that pattern into a different pattern. Because humans, like we're very pattern-based creatures. So say, for example, like if you were a smoker, they say that a big part of smoking isn't the nicotine hit. By the way, smoking is absolutely repulsive. I mean, it is yet again, another act of kind of self-sabotage. And you'll see that when you get your lung cancer, you, you know, you, if this is what you're doing, it doesn't matter how, what it is. Even if you're shifting to vaping, it is the act of the habit of reaching for the pack of cigarettes or lighting it or that smell that you get when you put the flame against the butt of the cigarette and you suck and it makes that smell that you get. And it's like, you know, that that's a habit that you're facilitating in your head. So a lot of um, work in psychology is looking at breaking the habit or replacing the habit with something else rather than reaching for the pack of cigarettes. So unhealthy thought patterns can also be a habit and recognition of that is self-reflection self-reflection creates self-awareness and that's really what spirituality is it's mastery of self i had someone just the other day uh, if you're listening uh, hello i always i never say you in anyone's names here but 
he said to me, I like listening to spiritual people talk. And I thought, what do you think spirituality is other than mastery of self-awareness of self? We're all spiritual creatures. Spirituality isn't something that is outside of you. It, it is right now. It's being present in the moment, whether that's making art or looking out the window or putting on the kettle or whatever. We're all like just being present is and aware of yourself because the moment is it's as soon as you get that, the better. Because as soon as you get that, now you can start to see how your behavior impacts other people. And then you can be self-aware and then you can do something. Until you don't get it, you will, nothing will change. Yeah. Anyway, the real, the, yeah, the real message was today, just keep going. One, it's one page at a time. If you're a writer, some days it's like a waterfall. Lots of writing comes through you. Each day presents a different set of paradigms, angles, circumstances, the wind change, the sun's different. You know, we can't step in the same river twice. Everything's always changing all around us and we have to change too to um, accommodate those expansions and shifts. And so, and then some days you get nothing and it's not working. And I've kind of learned over the years that they're the days where when that happens, I'm not meant to be making art that day. I'm meant to be doing something else. But don't do nothing. Doing nothing and procrastinating and waiting, um, you couldn't do anything more self-destructive than just wait. Because if you wait, nothing's going to happen. We're part of the, the getting of it. And I had a, a reading that kind of comes to mind many years ago. A woman came to me and sat before me in a reading situation. Um, it was a psychic reading I was giving her. And um, I remember her sitting on the cushion in front of me and she asked me when was she going to get a lot. I didn't understand what she meant by the term lot until I realised like a lot, a lot of land and she was trying to, you know, she came to me because she just wanted to access a timeline of when this lot or this property was going to be acquired by her. And it was quite really, really and this stays with me deeply because this woman was so deranged from reality that she did not understand that, that she is part of the getting of what it ever is that she wants. You are part of the getting of the lot. So I explained it to her in a really direct uh, way. I'm a very direct person. I just like to say, you know, how, this is it, this is it, this is it, right? If you go home, let's put it this way. If I told her if you went home and you just turned off all of the electrical devices in your house, your microwave, your internet, your TV, everything, and just shut the door and didn't go outside, nothing would happen because you're not closing the gap between what it is that you say that you want and bringing that of what it is closer to you to acquire what it is that you want. In her mind, she was so entitled that she thought that it was going to come to her just by default. A lot of people have this mindset, I've noticed, um, de definitely through social media, where it's like, if I look aesthetically pretty, then by default, things just come to me. But all things change, all things shift. And then a lot of people that base their life on being pretty as they age, the thing that they thought would keep them safe of the greatest value is the thing that declines and regresses as we age. And then that's taken away from them. And in doing so, because they never put in any effort or work, they are absolutely fucked and they don't know what to do because the thing that they most valued flees them. It's fleeing from them. 
and then they go into this kind of existential crisis, which I see a lot actually with women, um, which is making, making me very sad, but it's the value of society. It's like what I look like is my value, which is really fucked up. But that's how society works. A lot of it is primal. It's all visual. So I'm back to the point. We are part of the getting of it. So don't wait. Don't sit around. Um, it's the stories that we tell ourselves that keep us on these loops. So change the story. Shift the goalposts. Get a goal. Get somewhere to go. But know that you are part of the acquisition of what it is that you're wanting to accomplish. And if you just have to keep going, even if no one places any... I mean, I've got... You'll probably... I get more support um, from perfect strangers than I do from my friends. I've got friends that never even ask me how I am. I've got friends that never even say, hey, how's your book going? How's your art going? How are you? What's going on with you? They don't want to go deep. They can't. They're too disconnected from themselves and they don't even know it. They'll always talk about things that are external. They can never talk about anything internal and it can't go anywhere. It can never go anywhere with these people. They won't go anywhere. They're doing nothing because they're not connected to themselves. But brought me back to the chat that I had the other day. I've had people messaging me about the um, closeted men comment that I wrote in or that I said is that here it is that you expect and demand that others will be authentic with you, but yet you don't even show who you really are to them so they can even see who you really are to get to know who you are. That's not how relationships work relationships aren't just take, 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 take. You have to be willing to give. And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about your soul and your energy and your effort and your heart. A lot of people just have this hole or this emptiness in their heart and they're the ones you stay away from. They're the ones that you get the fuck away from, okay? So yeah, you, you get more support from perfect strangers than you will usually from your own friends. That's just how humans tend to be. Um, but whatever it is that you're doing, just don't stop and just keep showing up and knocking on doors and hoping and wishing and praying and projecting and aligning. And even if you're crawling and you're crippled, like even the word crippled means like you can't your body can't even move like you can't even get up off the ground crawl drag don't stop just keep pushing keep swimming even if there's sharks circling you and you're in the ocean and you're lost just keep moving don't stop i'm not going to say it any more than i've already said it that is the secret that is the real secret there is nothing more than that and it's consistency over periods of time that create the weight loss. It's consistencies over periods of time that create the painting, that make the book, that write the thing, that makes the shift. Showing up once a week is going to do absolutely nothing. Don't think that doing the bare minimum is going to get you a gold medal. You're not entitled to anything. You have to earn it. Okay. Lots of love. I'll leave it here. Leave a comment below. I read all the comments and I will be replying to um, uh, the others in the next day or so. Send me some love. I'm sending you love back and I'm opening my heart here. And even if no one told you today that you were loved, I loved you. Okay, bye, bye.